Welcome to Physique, the free energy special interest group where science meets spirituality in the quest for truth and knowledge to free humanity and transform this planet into a paradise. Hi everyone, I'm Crystal Gore. I am the founder and initiator of Physique, the free energy special interest group. And I have here with me my co-chairs, Three of them are here. Wow. I mean, James Ring just got back from his uh, uh, well, secret space program conferences from all over the country. Uh, welcome back, James. It's good to have you back with us. And uh, we have Dr. Fres Fressel here, the head of the scientific team uh, in uh, teaching us on the technology stuff. And uh, we have Pontus Hefger, who's the head of our R&D teams here in the uh, head of R&D at Physic. So um, I really am so happy to have um, a sort of, I would say, star-started attendees here in our 101st Physic meeting. And today is the 1st of June, 2022. As I said, um, we are a free energy special interest group, and it is a platform that is non-biased. We welcome everyone from any school of thoughts. Uh, to share their ideas, the technology, the knowledge and um, intel or information or whatever to help the masses wake up and to enable us, all of us here, to learn together, to improve and to develop whatever we are here to develop, especially these um, the free energy stuff and the healing technologies that we are looking forward to also receiving from the release uh, of advanced technologies from wherever, whoever wants to release it. We'd be so happy to have it here with us because we know what to do with them. And this is a group of enthusiasts and we have been doing this for, uh, for all of you from, uh, uh, it's a labor of love from our hearts and uh, we don't charge anything, but of course it will be so nice if, you got some extra to pay for it to enable us to continue with this work whilst we are waiting for funding to come in from philanthropists. Last meeting, our 100th meeting, we had Dr. Valerie Mikhailovich um, Yuvarov speaking on the pyramidal technology, pyramid science. Um, and we are so happy to, you know, to learn from him. And he's got so much to share. So uh, we suggest that he comes back to continue with what he can share and be helping you, okay? And then once we finish that, then please pen down in the diary, 100, the 102nd visit meeting on the 6th of July. Okay, so hopefully by that time, I probably will be presenting this meeting, 102nd visit meeting probably I'm not sure, but I'm just hoping, you know, to get to where Pontus is. So a team of us will be doing that live, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, okay, so um, this is how you can get involved. I mean, do please subscribe to all our video channels. We've got BitChute, YouTube, uh, Odyssey, and do subscribe to our Telegram channel. It's just uh, t.me uh, forward slash physic underscore group. So you can have interaction with the members and it's good to have some interaction because we are going through very strange times now these days. Um, everybody needs to know what's going on in order to have a good balanced sound mind to go through things. All right, thank you so much Pontus for helping me share screen here. I would like to then continue with introducing um, Dr. Valerie, because this is a recording and they are all standalone bits anyway. Dr. Valerie Mikhailovich Yuvarov is the head of the Department of UFO Research, Paleo, Paleo Sciences and Paleo Technology of the National Security Academy of Russia and has devoted 33 years to ufology as well as to the study of the legacy of ancient civilizations. He is a member of Russian Geographic Society and head of UFO Association of the Unity of Supreme Officers of Russia. Valerie is well known in the West, having been asked to speak at a number of American UFO conferences. He is the author of numerous papers on 
Paleon Science, as well as Ufology and Esoterica, published in the Russian and foreign press. He has initiated and participated in a number of expeditions to India and Egypt in search of material evidence of ancient knowledge. Right, we will be all ears. Dr. Valerie Yubarov, may I then hand the microphone over to you and you can start your presentation for about 40 to 45 minutes. And then I will invite Dr. Sam Osmanagit to, to join in. All right, thank you so much. So thank you for your invitation. And I'm really, really happy that Sam is together with me. We haven't seen, we haven't been talking Sam, my friend for a long time. So, and for this period, yes, we have got a lot of new interesting materials, which I'd like, and I will be very happy to share with you, Sam, and with people also. So, and also great, great, you know, hello from my friend, Sam, from my family. So, Ariana is always talking about you. She loves you very, very much, you know. So, <clears throat> so when... Now I'm talking about the pyramids, especially the, this last period. You see everything is not so easy in the world, especially on the political level. It's a pretty hard time on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's a very interesting time because some changes in our civilization will happen soon. And these serious changes will be done with the help of the pyramids for sure. As you know, I spent more than 33 years investigating pyramids on a different levels. And for me, most important discovery was the understanding the principles, how pyramid must be built so it would work and it would have a deep and very effective influence on one hand on the human health and on the other hand on our emotional side on our psychic side on our mentality because pyramid is the instrument which is connecting us directly to cosmic consciousness. So when we are talking about the pyramids and I'm receiving a lot of questions about the pyramids and how it should be properly built. First of all, I'd like to point out pyramid must be planned exactly according to the schema, how our human body is built. And Sam, listen, my friend, just at the end of last year, I wrote the most important material in my life, which is called the mechanism of influence of the pyramid on the human body. And I already mentioned that this is the first in the world material which is on the one hand is to describe the mechanism we need to use um, a certain scientific knowledge especially those part of the knowledge which is this, describing mechanisms of the spine of the brains of the cellar of the brains and how all this stuff is working but you know it was not, not enough to describe how pyramid is affecting human body. Uh, because there is no enough understanding uh, from the present science. And here, when I put together esoteric approach together with the scientific approach, it, it happened. And it described that pyramid must be built exactly like our antenna inside of our bodies. So this is the reason why when the pyramids in ancient time have been you know, planned, like it's a 
first of all, the priests, they needed to, to create an idea why, what for they are going to build a pyramid. But in any case, if you just look on the more than 110 different pyramids, for example, in Egypt, you will see that all these pyramids, they are different. They are different in size. It's just because they have been tuned on different people. And to tune the pyramid properly on the human body, you need to know the length of the spine, for example, of the, of the individual, for example, pharaohs. And then some other parameters, which helps to create a pyramid which will empower internal antenna, which is spine, which is the brain, hemisphere of the brain, and which is connecting our consciousness, which is connecting our immune system to the, to the cosmos, to the universe. Because, you know, all ancient texts says that human being is a projection of the gut. So we are small cells. Actually, we are constructed exactly like the God is constructed. So, and if we build the pyramid according to this principle, then human body gets into the resonance with the universe and you start to receive energy and information from the universe and most important, those commands which are needed for our immune system, for our genetic system, commands which help to correct all deviations from norm. And this, for example, the pyramid, the sun pyramid in Bosnia is perfect, perfect example for that. When especially Sam found that energetical beam coming from outer space, from, from the skies falling into the pyramid. This is exactly the channel about which uh, almost all ancient texts are saying. This is the channel through which the information is coming. So when the human being like Sam, when somebody goes on top of your pyramid standing there, the vibration of the body go into the resonance with this energetical beam and information about the human body immediately goes up into the center. And then all this huge amount of information is, um, is calculated, let's say like calculated, like in a huge cosmic computer. And when the result is received, what actually should be done for the present person, for the particular individual person, then through this beam, this information is coming back and person standing on the pyramid is receiving priceless information. This is the exact formula, what your organism must do to correct all deviations from norm on one hand. And on the other hand, we are receiving a special type of energy, which are on one hand helps all the signals to perfectly come through all energetical channels in the body. And on the other hand, it is giving kind of a power, which makes you, you know, like, it um, empowers your wish to do something, to change yourself for better, to change the world for better. And again, just returning to what actually Sam is doing in the tunnels and on the pyramids, this is again, I'd like to find out, it's the exact example, perfect example, how this system is working. And what kind of uh, healing results people are having there. So 
all my friends here in Russia, I'm recommending, I'm giving advice just to come to Sam, to Bosnia, because there you can experience this influence because this channel, it, it works daily over there, almost daily. And, you know, and each person which is coming there, they found themselves just being connected, not only to, to the center, which is, you know, sending kind of help, kind of information. It also helps to join people with one and the same type of energy. So it means like universe is sending signals for the people. You, I think you understand what I mean, to unite, to go, to put together all our powers, all, all our wish to change ourselves in this world for better. And this is the reason why we are having this healing effect in our pyramids in Russia, which we actually built according to this principle, we also have this type of uh, effect. But um, we have to make kind of a devices to connect our pyramids to the center of the universe where the all information about each person actually is existing there. But Sam is lucky because his pyramid is one of the oldest one and all this internal devices have been built and installed by very highly developed civilization thousands of years ago. So from this uh, point of view, the uh, sun pyramid and pyramids in Bosnia, very, very interesting objects for investigation and for the visitation. And here you see, it's interesting pictures, not, I'd like to point out to show you, you see this object here. You see the light? Do you see it? Yes. Yeah, this is UFO. It's interesting that this extraterrestrial object, they started to visit the place of construction, let's say from the beginning. And then it appeared already when the pyramid have been almost built. You see also these objects here. And the most interesting was the appearance of the big UFOs of the complex when it was completely finished. Um, I do not remember, did I tell you this story before, my friends? No. No yet, yes. So I just, then I just show you something. It's interesting because uh, the pyramid complex uh, which we built in Russia, it's, uh, it's pretty unusual system. You see, beside the physical pyramids, we have created so-called energetical pyramids. If we connect, you see these yellow lines, if we just connect all these uh, tops of the pyramids by lines, we see that it creates kind of an energetical pyramid. And this is from the point of, of view of technology, it's important to create not only physical pyramids, it's also important to create kind of an energetical pyramid. And on this picture also, you see if we just put a lines and touch the tops of the pyramid, we, we, we can see a huge, very big energetical pyramid. So this principle actually was used in construction of, for example, some ancient uh, temple complexes, like here on Korvat, you see, if we just put a lines here, you see, this is a big, big, very big pyramid. The same principle here. If we just put a lines on top of each uh, these uh, towers, then, we, we will see a lot of energetical pyramids. The same is here. If we just put a lines on one hand, it's a temple. On the other hand, this is the pyramids. This principle 
we can see in many, many different cultures and different religions, the same principle here you see in Russia, if we put lines together here, you see energetical pyramids over the uh, Russian churches. So this is the reason why we decided to create this type of energetical pyramids with the help of a special octahedron system, which have been installed in the corner, in four corners of pyramid complex, which we have built in Russia. So just shortly, I will show you how we have been installing it. Inside of each octahedron, there is a big energetical, physical energetical system. So, and if we just imagine the energetical beam coming through this octahedron, it works like a, like a laser, energetical laser beam. Just, you see, just touching the tops of the pyramid. And when we have built all four octahedrons and then tuned the system, just, you know, made it perfect. In some minutes after that, over one of the octahedron appeared the UFO. That was interesting. It appeared and was hovering over octahedron approximately two minutes. And then it made a jump, very quick jump to another one. It was maybe half of a second. Northwest uh, octahedron also, the object was hovering approximately two minutes. And then it makes another very quick jump to another one. And like this, it was flying over all four octahedrons. And then when it was hovering over the last one in the forest, it has disappeared then. And it means on one hand that the pyramid complex was built properly and it created a very powerful energetical um, beam visible in the universe and in the parallel dimension of our planet. This is the reason why this UFO quickly appeared and made kind of GPS marks. So, now we can be sure that uh, this complex is marked on the universal or cosmic map, which UFOs are using flying from one place, from one area, from one dimension to another. And right after that, our pyramid complex also started to show very unusual healing effects. And before this case also, Sam, he knows his story. Here on this picture, you can see two persons and the right of, of, of us with a mustache. His name is Dmitry and he was from Moscow. He was the chief of a construction company which was building the complex of the pyramid. And this guy, he had a very serious problems with asthma. So serious that he, he had to use special medicine three, four, five times per day, just let's say to keep safe and alive. And once, we have been invited to the pyramid for kind of ex experiment. Uh, the person who was financing, his name is Vlad. When Vlad was calling us, he said that the friends of them, of him, uh, they brought from India kind of a seashell, which is able to make a sound. 
And we decided to make this experiment. We came to the pyramid and here on this picture, you see so-called uh, the camera uh, or the chamber of Oracle. So it's, it stands in the middle of the pyramid on the bottom level. Beneath this system, there is a big, big crystal. So we came into this system and we tried to make a sound with this seashell. And it was, as I told you, very interesting experience right after the loud sound with, which have been produced in the pyramid, Dmitri, he fall down on his knees. He was covered with sweat and, and looked very, very pale. And then his eyes was like, you know, he was very scared by the effect of the pyramid on his body. And he just simply ran away from the pyramid like a child. Interesting is that right after this, he stopped to use any medicine and he never ever had any problems with asthma. So he was healed just for one session. And we also, for future experiments, installed in our pyramid this bronze bell for the same reason, just making the sound with the bronze bell. We are synchronizing vibrations of our body of our cells with the vibration of the body of the pyramid and through pyramid with the with the body of the earth actually we are synchronizing aura of the human being with the aura of the planet earth and by this we have very very clear healing effects and uh, also, I'd like to shortly mention that uh, the, we made an experiment in Russian Academy of Science. And here you can see the list of, uh, it's a list of effects which we have uh, encountered in the pyramids. And also we have been making our scientific experiments in 10 different institutes of Russian Academy of Science, which, which show us very unusual effects. First of all, effects helping us to, for example, heal cancer, to improve our immune system, to improve our energy system, to perfect our nervous system. But the most interesting result, which actually we have received, I myself have received when uh, we have been experimenting with the pyramid, this some effects which pyramid, which, which pyramid has on our hormonal system. One of the interesting results, which we in the nearest future are going to not only deeper investigate, we also plan to make kind of, let's say experiments. Because um, we came to understanding how pyramid in ancient times have been used as a tool for consciously controlled reincarnation. This is the key moment, Sam, I also would like to share with you. We came to understanding how this system actually should work. We came to understanding of the technology because uh, this, this gives us a possibility, let's say, to engineer not only imagine, just create, you know, just to plan our future, we can plan not only the place where we then will be reborn, we can plan the family. Actually, we can plan everything. And as ancient text says, and some experiments which we have 
dawn in the pyramids showed us that after this, human being receives very unusual, powerful, energetical capacities. People start to remember their previous lives. And at the same time, they receive those interesting possibilities which have been described in some ancient books, like, for example, Popol Vuh. It's a, it's a Mayan tribe, and this book is describing very interesting effects, which, uh, let's say, God has had in ancient times. But today, we came to understanding and possibility to bring this technology into life and practically already use it. And this will help to change not only mentality, not only our health and the physical capacities, it will help to change our civilization and the how to say, there is type of ecology, which is natural ecology and ecology of the consciousness. So we can affect these aspects of our life and everything can be changed critically, positively within the following 10, maximum 15 years. And this is the main program which actually we have created for ourselves. I mean, I'm talking about the group I'm working with. And now we are trying to do our best to bring, to describe all these possibilities on the one hand on the scientific basis. On the other hand, we are trying to gather as much uh, results of a different test, medical tests, physical tests, and different stories. And also uh, we are going to invite you, Sam, also together in our team for the future work, because you are the great guy, Sam. <laughs> I, I love you not only as a person, we love, all you have done in Bosnia with your pyramids, with the, with, the, with the tunnels, and all this experience is absolutely priceless. So, and I think, and I hope that with the following couple of years, we're gonna make unbelievable, you know, steps ahead, steps forward. So in general, as long as we have a very, very short time here to talk, I cannot give you, you know, just full, you know, full picture of all we are doing there. I can give you just a very brief, short information about most interesting uh, projects we are developing in Russia. And now we can, let's say, go together with Sam. And if you have kind of a questions about the healing effects in the pyramids, because pyramids has a really wonderful healing effect. And also in the pyramids, we have, we had the possibilities to, to install kind of a contact with extraterrestrial world. It happened also with me, it happened not only in Keops pyramid, it happened also here in Tomsk pyramid. So if you have some specific questions about it, you are welcome to answer. So, and now together with Sam, we are ready to answer your questions about these healing effects. Right, before we move on to that section of this talk, Dr. Valerie Uvarov, I think um, you did promise us that in this talk, you would like to tell us more about your interaction with the, the, the ETs in the Siberian wilderness and also how you had a discussion with them on Earth's history, multi-dimensions and uh, the, the multi-dimensional worlds 
and our our place in the cosmos and more. I think you forgot to, <laughs> to no, no, touch no. on that one. Yeah. No, no. Um, I didn't forget about it. Mm -hmm. I I just mentioned mm -hmm. that um, actually there is a material, mm -hmm. just a kind of an article which is written about it, mm -hmm. which um, I'm I'm ready to share with you. Mm -hmm. And this material now is in internet, and I can send and I can send you a link. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, yes, I was kind of a lucky man who had a chance to be in contact with this highly developed, I'd say, people. They are not gods. This is the people on a much higher level of development than we are, and it was a chance to ask some questions about our civilization, uh, about what's going on, what are the most problem here, also about, uh, you know, the most, most interesting uh, hot topics uh, of our lives. And they have explained to me what's going on and what part of, um, what role, let's say, we are, here on a planet earth are playing for our galaxy and so for me it will be much much easier if you just ask me kind of a question what would you like to know uh, about our role in our galaxy then it will be for me much easier to explain to give you an idea so okay before we start this uh q a session with uh, you and dr sam i would like to introduce dr sam samir osmanagi he is the discoverer of the bosnian pyramids he's a scientist megalithic and pyramid sites researcher just as uh, as uh, valerie is internationally acclaimed author with 18 books to his name, you probably have written more than, <laughs> I don't know, sorry, you tell me. Anyway, anthropology professor and director of Center for Anthropology at uh, the American University in Bosnia, Herzegovina. Uh, he's the founder of a non-profit, non-government archaeological park, a Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun Foundation, Saraveo registered for uh, archaeological digging, scientific research, and promotion of archaeological tourism. He is the first honoree of the Amelia B. Awards, Edwards Award for Outstanding Research and Advancement of Knowledge of Pyramids Around the World, Chicago, USA, 2016. He's awarded Diamond in the Pyramid Science, Bengaluru, India, 2016, for having done exceptional, outstanding, fundamental work in creating basic awareness of the pyramid energy power. His work in scientific field experiments in Bosnian pyramids has resulted in new definition of pyramids. As he said, Sam said, they're not tombs for kings, but energy machines used by living communities for cosmic communication, self-healing, improvement of molecular um, structure of water and food, auric field healing, chakras, chakras balancing, uh, development of spiritual senses and refinement of social organization, which he will be talking about after the Q&A session in more detail. Over to you now, uh, Dr. Sam and Valerie for the Q&A, if you would uh, take over, co-chair, Fres. Thank you very much. Oh. <clears throat> Being very humbled uh, by you guys, by the two of you and your uh, stuff, I have not seen a UFO that I can attest to. I have never met an, an extraterrestrial being. And so uh, this is really quite fun. And uh, so that's, I've, I've had my chance to sit on the top of a mountain uh, over 2,000 feet tall the actual prefaces of it and experience the energy coming off of that peak right through my behind where I was sitting and also got the message which was immediately leave and I realized that the clouds were coming in and I was basically at a lightning strike spot and I could feel the energy coming up through the mountain through my body 
Um, three weeks later, I did have a near-death experience. So that kind of gets where my background is, and I'm sitting there going, oh, wow. Um, yeah, there's a lot of energy that comes off of the tips of any of these pyramidal shapes, either natural mountains or these constructed ones. Um, the question I'm going to start with is, we are communicating through these pyramids, you are saying, with other beings in our galaxy. How do we identify these when we come in contact? How do we, how, how do we know who we're talking about is the first question. So it's a question to me? Yes. yes. So all depends on the understanding on the knowledge of the technology through which such kind of a communication can be released. Okay. And uh, for proper result, you need to build a serious big pyramid as an instrument because all that tests we have, which we have done and all that experiments which we have done and all this ancient scriptures we have been investigating show us that the pyramid have been used as a big cosmic antenna. So the problem of humanity, which let's say are communicating with the gods is that I'm, I'm, I'm going to describe it very, very shortly. It's done through so-called uh, astral bodies. This is the biggest problem. Astral body, uh, this, uh, this type of technology for communication, you can use at home anywhere you like. But you need to build an instrument which is activating fifth chakra of the human body. And all that experiments, all that results, which, for example, Sam received, and he's going to talk about this chakra activation uh, experiments and experiences, is its exact description of the process, which I'm going to give a very brief information. Because, for example, the Cheops pyramid has a few names. First name is the fifth section of Duat. It means fifth energetical body of our aura. And at the same time, there is another name, which I do not know how to properly call it in English. We are using it in, in Russia. But understanding is that pyramid is the place. This is the like a hole, tiny hole through which soul is extracted from our world into another higher realm. So, and just to answer your question, I'm just, I want to point out the main important thing that this is the reason why they have been building the pyramids like Cheops 20 years. Can you imagine how, how much resources have been used to construct the system for one reason to use this pyramid for as the tool for space communication and this is now what i can explain to you because when you start to use this type of instrument then your experience will be quite different because on this level of the instrument the conversation between human being and let's say extraterrestrial someone is, is realized on a, on a very understandable level. Yeah. And as much uh, science you know, as better for you because they will be talking to you using the language, that is the scientific language which you have created or received when you have been learning you know, in institute or somewhere else. So just shortly, I can assure you that there is a big difference and it gives you exact understanding on one hand that you are talking using the proper channel. But when I was talking about myself and my experience, 
I was talking about not only such kind of uh, uh, interaction, I was talking about the physical interaction. But when it happens physically, it's quite a different story. Excellent uh, segue into the next question. So we have the soul portion of your being inside, let's say your pyramid, and it's being projected that small little piece out through the channel through the top, let's say, and it goes into a astral body. And my question that was I had here pre written was, is this basically a holographic 3D projection? that we're dealing with something similar to a 3d projection but someplace else in the universe no the, the system is different okay absolutely different each person you sam me we have we have this let's say organs like spine like brains i don't know how to properly call it in english language this um uh, this pineal glands and the other mm -hmm. system it creates all the system creates kind of a channel energetical channel which connects you directly to the center of the universe this is the this is the main idea and many i, I would say all ancient egyptian texts they are talking about you what happens in the pyramid what happens for example on the pyramid of the sun the problem of most people on our planet Earth that this, let's call it this antenna is working very weak because of the problems with the spine, you know, salt, nervous system, the other things. So it, it works not effective. When you go into the pyramid, pyramid is detecting your vibration. It's empowering your aura vibration. Pyramid is creating energetical beam and it helps to connect you directly to the center of the universe. Then this is the reason why we can receive information from outer space, from someone. And it can be, it can happen with any person because we are all constructed equally. The main idea is that the pyramid for such purposes can, must be built properly, or we can use the pyramid, which have like Sun Pyramid in Bosnia, which have been built thousands of years ago, and it has already pre-installed energetical system which empower your internal energy system, your internal antenna, and it helps to have anyone to have a very effective communication. So this is just general answer. Okay. Uh, your, the two pyramids that we're talking about today are similar in shape and form. Is the Nubian, uh pyramid which is a different shape how does that work uh in comparison to the two that both uh you and sam are working with so uh answer is very simple because uh the pyramids nubian pyramids have been used for uh for consciously controlled reincarnation let's say like this this is quite a different type. Uh, the bigger, the, 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 when the slopes of the pyramids are like Cheops, for example, pyramid, or like the Sun Pyramid in Bosnia, this type of pyramids are more tuned on the human body, life human body. And this is the reason why, for example, in Egypt, mostly we have the pyramids like uh, how to say their foundation is bigger. So Nubian pyramids have been built as the place where they put a dead body actually for consciously controlled reincarnation, but it didn't happen just because in general, 
they have lost the knowledge about this technology. They tried to do it, but it didn't happen. So this is the reason why, in general, we had such type like Nubian pyramids or like Kyops pyramid or a Sun pyramid in Bosnia, because Sun pyramid in Bosnia is tuned on the living human being. When you tune your pyramid and you've got your uh, Octobrins, I think you his pronounce it right, on the four corners, mm -hmm. you've used the tops of the pyramid, the little ones, and similar to the cathedrals, as you were explaining. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason or is there a tuning thing that actually rises that point of intersection higher, increasing the etheric pyramid that you have in place? Yes, I would say yes. Because it, on one hand, empowers the complex of the pyramid, but the, this, this top where these energetical beams are meeting each other, it creates an area of transition of the energy from one dimension, from let's say, from one realm to another. This is like, a, huh, I don't know how to properly uh, explain it in a scientific language, but this is the key moment. And uh, I can assure you that today, all developed civilization of the universe, they use this type of the pyramids and this type of construction of the pyramids when the tops of are touched. And mm -hmm. this is a nine pyramid, such a complex has nine pyramid or 13 pyramids together. It depends on the tune and the reason. What for you're gonna use this complex? Okay, excellent. Uh, we take a look at energetic fields above pyramids and the US currency has the pyramid with the missing top on it, mm -hmm. alluding to the ethereal above it, you know, as, as the missing capstone. Uh, oh, I lost the question, I'm sorry. Uh, Oh, when we, I'm going to go back to your October, the, the corner pieces of your particular one. I have a technical question from our other team. By chance, is there a heavy earth ground to those outside October? Like we would see for grounding power stations or anything like that. Is there a heavy earth ground on those far adjustable mm -hmm. points? What do you mean earth ground? I didn't understand the question. What do you mean by that? Uh, basically to dump, uh, we usually we use an earth ground uh, in electricity to either dump electrons. No, I, 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 I understand. No, no, no. Okay. We do. No. Excellent. So, uh, but this is also, these are set up on the same uh, Chris, um, quartz crystals as the rest of it. So you're using the, okay. I, 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 I'm catching up with you. Thank you. Um, have you, when you're inside the pyramid, you, you've got this astral body projection. Is there telekinesis or moving of objects inside the pyramid or other ways that you see being uh, enhanced by the, the pyramid? First of all, when we when you are working in pyramid in a properly built pyramid, uh, it's not correct to talk about the astral body because astral body this is the second energetical body of a human being. Second, okay. in the pyramid, like for example, on top of the Sun Pyramid in Bosnia, we are we should operate with the fifth energetical body, which in ancient Egypt have been called Assyrian, Assyrian body. Actually, Osiris, he was representation or a symbol of the fifth energetical body. And Osiris was the king of the death, let's say, the one who could travel, you know, in Duat. But Duat, as I mentioned in my previous uh, 
presentation. Duat is what we call aura. Because yeah. we have aura, we have energetical bodies around our physical body, about around the star, universe has also its aura. So all together, it's called Duat. And he was the chief of the fifth level of Duat. Because, okay. and this is the reason why Pyramid is giving such unusual possibilities, just because fifth energetical body is activated in the pyramid. This is the key moment, fifth energetical body, not second. Second, this is the dead end. You will be always coming around talking with, the, with some, somebody else, but not with a serious high spiritual level. It starts from the fifth energetical body, Assyrian body. So for this, you need to build whether the proper pyramid or to use ancient pyramids built by, let's say, helped to build by extraterrestrials like in Bosnia. Excellent. I have one more comment and then I'm gonna turn this back over to Crystal, which was the, what's interesting, we look at the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of the Jewish faith, Duat. Mm -hmm is the connection between yeah. the two is duat <laughs> crystal back okay. to you yeah. okay i'm here uh, thank you yeah i actually wanted to, to pass over the microphone to dr sam but i i actually wanted to to know one more thing because we promised the audience with the synopsis of your talk today mm -hmm. valerie about the uh uh, you said you had an encounter in the chaos pyramid with the ETs, and uh, oh, have you already touched on this? And in, in, I, can, in the... I, I can explain. Yeah. So, so uh, the main idea of this actual experiment was based on the knowledge which we have uh, found in ancient Egyptian texts. Mm -hmm. There are many, many texts which are giving you. Uh, like a hint that when pyramids have been built, they have been tuned on the uh, on the music, so like on the notes. So and they they took a special devices inside of the pyramid, uh, like a tunic folk. You know what means tuning fork, yes, and they use these devices mm -hmm. just to see whether the pyramid is sounding, is singing properly. It means built properly, or it it needs to be tuned deeper and more. So this is the reason why, when we came to clear understanding that um, the pyramid, Cheops pyramid, can be used or react like a musical instrument, mm -hmm. we took some musical devices into the Cheops pyramid, install it, and then we have started to, to make a sound like we put classical music, flute music, different type of the sound machines, and pyramid was silent it doesn't it has no any effect but when we put mantra om mm -hmm. that was amazing because the kelps pyramid immediately started to sing it was you know like all walls started to make a sound we call it it starts to sing oh, wow. and i i have experienced very powerful electromagnetic influence when my body was tickling you know like electricity was tickling 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 and um, interesting is that within the following few minutes the air in the chamber was absolutely different like in the forest just because before it was you know there are many people there it was smelling not so well. It was not so easy to breathe. But after that, the air be became like in the forest, perfect. Wow. And then, and then, uh, when we changed the music, and I remember it was mantra Om Ki. 
and it started approximately, it was 34th minute of the sound experiment. Inside of the head appeared the voice which said, we have heard you. Wow. <laughs> this is so amazing. So that's the interaction of communication. My friend, he was jumped on his legs. He was so, he was, you know, scared to, to, to hear this voice, but was, but voice said, for the first time in a few thousand years, you have done everything properly. You have switched on the pyramid. Bravo. Well done. You know, and it was interesting because it was the man voice and I understood deeply in myself that we are talking with someone who was probably talking with Kyops thousands of years ago. Mm. And he said, in spite of the fact that the pyramid is destroyed and it was kind of a picture given, you know, violin, Stradivaria violin with a broken deck. He said, yes, but we have recognized the sound of the pyramid. Mm. And we also have been recording the music which was reflected from the walls of the chamber. Mm -hmm. And interesting for me was that that voice said, take the sound into your pyramid and it will help to convert. It means to bring the energy of Kelp's pyramid into your new pyramid, mm -hmm. which you are building. For me, it was interesting that they, they knew that we are building the pyramid already and they gave a very interesting advice. So for us at that moment, it was clear that first of all, sound plays a decisive role, not only in construction of the pyramid, it plays a decisive role in switching on the pyramid. It means if you build a pyramid, that's great, but you need to switch it on. And for that, you need also to know and to use kind of a special technology, again with the sound. So now it's it just interesting idea, which is putting together the pyramid and the sound. So mm -hmm. it's just general idea of the experience which we had in the Kelps pyramid 14 years ago. So have you, knowing this, have you experimented with the, uh, the Schumann in relation to the Schumann resonance uh, with the 432 hertz or the solfeggio frequency? Uh, we, didn't, we didn't do kind of uh, special experiments about it. No, we, we have been, and I myself was trying to understand how we can create device it's not, it's like an Ark of Covenant. For me, it's now clear that that was a device with a special crystal inside, crystal cut in a special proportion, in a special form, and in a certain condition, this crystal was working as the antenna, which was projecting the signal to to the hypothalamic pituitary system in the head. Mm -hmm. And that was the moment when you, you can hear the voice. For me, that was the most interesting aspect of investigation. And we came to understanding how it was done, what that was, the crystal, and what parameters it has uh, how it was tuned on the human brain. That was my when most important. When did you important... have this breakthrough, Valerie? Uh, what when the mean? voice came through and said, at last you have Two, found it. It was uh, in Kyops Pyramid, it was 2008. Mm -hmm. 
2008. Thank you. So oh, what do you know, Dr. Sam? What say you? Have you been applying uh, Valerie's findings on, on the tuning of the vibrational frequencies in uh, your Boston pyramid? <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me Thank at this you. conference tonight. Hello, Valerie. It was very exciting to see the great news from your work at the Pyramid Science. And yes, I will answer your question. I've been researching the pyramids in the last four years, but also the megalithic sites around the world, dolmens, menhirs, stone spheres, artificial mounds. And I have concluded that almost everything they teach us about the ancient history is wrong. The origin of man, civilizations, and pyramids. They've been uh, programming us that the uh, pyramids were built as tombs for the pharaohs. However, but in a single pyramid on Egyptian soil, out of 155, the mummy has not been discovered. Of course, the pharaohs have been buried in the Valley of Kings, 300 kilometers to the south from the Giza Plateau, Thebes, Memphis, so in the 21st century, we need to find the scientific answers, what the pyramids were built for. Now, let me start with a little presentation here. Can you see the yes, share see. screen? Yeah. You see, back in 1981, ex-CIA director William Casey said that, uh, just a second, I just lost it. Just one second. Okay. said that uh, it was uh, at the first meeting of the Ronald Reagan's uh, government back in 1981. He said that uh, we will know that our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. It's coming from the director of the most influential and the strongest American intelligence agency out of 29. And uh, really, why would somebody try to teach us the false stuff? Well, it seems that the less we know, easier to manipulate with us and to control us. The same goes for the history. The less we know, they have the monopoly on the knowledge. They program us also to think that the pyramids are basically built in Egypt and Mexico. True enough, we have those three magnificent pyramids at the Giza Plateau, but they've been built on all six continents. Gimpy Pyramid in Australia, 250 pyramids in the central province of Shanxi. We have pyramids in Western Java, in Indonesia, Gunung Padang, 28,500 years old. Valerie mentioned Kohker Pyramid in Cambodia. We have pyramids on the island of Mauritius. We have uh, 104 Guima pyramids in Tenerife, on Canary Islands. These are seven pyramids on the Mauritius in the middle of the Indian Ocean, along Padang in the middle of the jungle. The Mayan pyramids, and that was the topic of my PhD, were built in countries that we know today as Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Salvador, and Belize. They built more than 100,000 pyramids, 97% of them still covered by soil vegetation. They are in the jungles, they are in the forests. What do we know about the civilization based on less than 3% of their pyramids, temples, cities? Then we have pyramids Lost it again, I apologize.
in Peru, more than 300 of them, the largest Huaca del Sol in the northeastern Peru, near the town of Trujillo. What we have today is the surface larger than five football fields and that's the one third of the original structure. The seven tier, the seven step Kohker pyramid in Cambodia, four sided, perfect orientation, east, west, north and south, elements of sacred geometry. We have tunnel going from the top at 90 degrees. We have resonance chambers, we have artificial lakes connected with the channels, kinetic energy. We have volcanic stones, meaning iron, energetically potent. We have sandstone, a lot of quartz crystal, again, energetically potent. And now we are coming closer to something that we can call criteria to build a pyramid. Out of 300, uh, 250 Chinese pyramids, there are 20 huge pyramids, more than 12,500 years old. As we know, archaeologists and historians are telling us in Paleolithic times, there are only hunters and the food gatherers not capable of building large structures. Wrong. They are teaching us wrong. 20 biggest pyramids were built from granite and sandstone blocks. Those that came later, 2,300 years back to 1,000 before present, were built from the mud bricks. That's inferior material. We don't see evolution. On the contrary, what was built first was superior. The same thing in Egypt. Teotihuacan is an excellent example that in Mexico there are huge pyramid complexes. Pyramid of the Sun, Moon, Quetzalcoatl, 600 smaller pyramid structures, and the historians are telling us nonsense. Toltecs built them 2,200 years back, it lasted 150 years ago, without a single scientific argument. Pyramids on the US soil, well, nobody teaches us about them. There are more than 120 pyramids in Cahokia National Park in the southwestern corner of the state of Illinois. The largest one behind me, which is called the Monk's Mound, has a surface 12% larger than the Great Pyramid of Egypt. When I spoke to the archaeologists there, they told me they do not research them, they do not dig, they don't have permissions, but they claim that they were built by the American Indians. As we know, the American Indians never built structures like this one here. And finally, the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Now, 17 years back, I first came to little Bosnian town of Visoko in central Bosnia to visit the local museum. And then I saw this. Everybody called this a natural hill because it is covered by soil, by vegetation, by the pine tree forest. However, what caught my attention was the perfect geometry. From here, from the aerial view, we can see one side in front of us, one to the left, and then one to the right and one in the back, four sides. From here, we can see one triangular face to the left, another one, there is a third one and the fourth one. So four triangular faces. From here, we can see three corners, left, right, back in the left, and there is the fourth one also. At that time, I took a compass and it showed me that those four sides perfectly match the cardinal points, east, west, north, and south. And that's how the pyramids were built. So back in 2005, I started excavation after I was granted the permission from the Ministry of Culture. And uh, I did some preliminary research, geological core drilling, archeological trenches, lab analysis, everything I did, there were anomalies that could not be explained by the natural forces. So, we started digging. This is the northeast corner, one meter below the soil, but discovering a beautiful corner. 
wherever we are digging, we were finding the construction material. So I realized the first criteria to call something a pyramid has to be perfect geometry. In most cases on this planet, it is four-sided pyramid. The second one is artificial material. In our case, one meter below the soil, we've been discovering the blocks. In this case, we can see rectangular blocks. The one to the right is four and a half meters long, about 13 feet long. It is five foot wide. It is one and a half feet thick, about seven tons or 16,000 pounds. Six sides, six breaks at 90 degrees. Obviously, not made by Mother Nature, but somebody made it. In the meantime, we were digging on 20 different sections. We call them archaeological trenches. And we've discovered this material everywhere. After we've analyzed this material at uh, seven institutes for materials, we were told that it was an artificially made concrete. Some people call it synthetic concrete. Some people call it geopolymer concrete. And this concrete is two to three times better quality than the concrete that we can make today. So if we are to uncover the whole pyramid, the one that we have in the lower left corner, it would look like the one on the central photo. Matter of fact, all we did was we just replaced the green color with the color of the concrete material. Now, Notice that from the, from the below up to the top of the pyramid, there is a height of 220 meters. The Great Pyramid of Egypt, 146.6. So this is the largest pyramidal structure on the planet. Now the third element to define the pyramid is the orientation of the sides. All the Chinese pyramids oriented to the north. Indonesia, north. Cambodia, north. Peru, north. Cahokia pyramids, north. In case of Egypt, it is the most obvious because people have been researching them for the last 200 years. For example, the Great Pyramid of Egypt has a, an error from the perfect north of zero degrees and three minutes. The second largest, Kafre or Kefren, zero degrees and three minutes. Mycerin or Mikarinos, zero degrees, 18 minutes. Bent Pyramid in Dakshu, zero degrees and 12 minutes. Beautiful Red Pyramid, the third largest in Egypt, zero degrees and five minutes. A few minutes is really almost a perfect orientation. And the northern side of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun has an error of zero degrees, zero minutes, and 12 seconds. That's the most precise orientation on the planet. Now, we know that the mainstream scientists, they know these facts, but they never talk about them because they don't understand them. The independent researchers like Hancock, John Anthony West, Robert Schock, and the others, they also talk about it but they don't have full understanding why the pyramids were oriented so perfectly. We do understand why, because we do have engineering minds also, namely, everything is energy. Nikola Tesla, the brilliant mind from here, said that 125 years back, many people before and many people after him. Our planet is a huge energy ball. When you have energy balls, you have movement of the energy. Two strongest energy flows on our planet are north-south and east-west. You build four-sided pyramid, you perfectly orient it, that initiates the movement of the energy inside the pyramid. In what way? The energy flow hits one third of the height, goes to two thirds, coming back to one third, and going down, completing the circle. Well, interestingly enough, there are three different movements of the energy when it comes to the pyramid. The first one is the one that goes through the top, 
the second one that I just described, and the third one, energy going off the pyramid base. Well, the second one, the one that goes one third, two third, one third, and uh, completing the circle, the three so far discovered chambers in Egyptian pyramid, Great Pyramid of Egypt, they are all on the way of this energy flow being exposed to the beneficial energy of the pyramid. This is the reason why the pyramids are oriented to the cardinal points. Well, in our case, we know that the fourth element are the inner chambers. Egyptian pyramids have them, Mayan pyramids have them, Chinese pyramids have them, and so on. In our case, we have seven level of passageways within the largest one, the Bosnian pyramid of the sun. Those passageways are at different depths. There are a number of chambers, and it seems that those passageways, they run like a spiral going all the way to the top. How else do we know that those pyramids are actually hollow? Well, we used geothermal satellite scanning, proving that the pyramid structures, top left, the Bosnian pyramid of the sun, to the right, the Bosnian pyramid of the moon, in the middle, the love pyramid, on the bottom, the pyramid of dragon, they are losing the energy, they are losing the warmth much quicker than the natural hills. What does that mean? The natural hills are the product of millions of years of sedimentation, of geological process. They are very compact and they, it's very hard you know, to warm them up and they lose the energy very slow. But in the case of the pyramids, due to the, the existence of passageways and chambers, they lose the energy much quicker because the tunnels, passageways, chambers exist inside the pyramids. The next elements, the underground tunnels under the Giza Plateau, at least four levels of passageways or tunnels. Why those tunnels have not been opened for the public in the last few decades? Because they are much older than 4,550 years. Under the, some of the Mayan pyramids, just recently we realized that there were passageways also. Let's say you go to Palenque in the Mexican state of Chiapas. They discovered those tunnels. When you enter the archaeological park there, the pyramids to the right, temple of inscriptions, they discovered tunnels, they connect three pyramids to the right, and then they recently they just said they connect all the pyramidal structures within the city. It was a huge city. Not only 25 pyramids that have been uncovered today, but 1,229 pyramids. And it seems that those tunnels connect this man city with some others. In our case, the case of the Bosnian pyramids, we have underground tunnel network, which extends for more than 100 kilometers, more than 60 miles. And this is the most extensive prehistorical underground tunnel network under any pyramid in the world. So far, we have discovered entrances to two levels of tunnels, total of six entrances. The next elements for the pyramids, very important, is the water. You know, Egyptian pyramids, River Nile, major rivers in China, Peru, Mexico. In the case of the Bosnian pyramids, and here I'm showing the aerial photo of the Bosnian Valley of the pyramids, we have two major rivers, River Foynica and River Bosna. Bosna is the largest Bosnian river. And we have a number of underground water flows, also extremely important. River Fornica, when you trace it back to the town of Fornica, about 25 kilometers away from the Bosnian pyramids, has ancient gold mines. Gold, always important element for the ancient pyramid builders. Element number seven, sacred geometry. 
What are the elements of circuit geometry? Number one, equilateral triangle. Three spots in the space you can connect on unlimited number of ways, but only one way is giving you equilateral triangle, the same length of the three sides, inner angles at 60 degrees, and this particular shape is part of circuit geometry. Hexagon. Hexagon consists of six equilateral triangles, six pyramids. Number pi, 3.14. Number phi, golden section, 1.618. Those elements can always be seen at the places where we have megalithic circles or pyramid sites. For example, in the case of Great Pyramid of Egypt, we have number pi, 3.14. The length at the base, 231 meters, two lengths, 462, divided by height, about 147, the result, 3.14. In the case of the Bosnian pyramids, when you connect the tops of the Bosnian pyramids of the sun, top left, with the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the moon, to the right, 2,180 meters from the moon pyramid to the dragon on the bottom, 2,180. From the dragon back to the sun pyramid, 2,180 meters. So we have equilateral triangles. We have also two golden section spirals. Now Fibonacci formulas. One spiral starts at the top of the sun pyramid and we can see the fourth one, the love pyramid and two more pyramid hills. So when you have elements of circuit geometry, you have movement of the energy. The next one, the green line is connecting top of the sun, moon and dragon pyramid on the bottom. The red line connecting the top of the love pyramid, going down temple of mother earth, going up to the right, the river and the entrance to the tunnels. The next element, location of the pyramid. They were always located above energy potent places. What does that mean? In the case of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, shown on this illustration, below we have huge iron plate. Iron generates electromagnetic field. The pyramid pulls this field up, amplifying it. How do we know that? Because we have measured it at the base and at the top. At the top, the signal is 50 times stronger. What does that mean? It means that the pyramid is an energy amplifier. The next element, volcanic lines. This is completely new element which we brought to the pyramid science. What is volcanic line? When you connect two volcanoes, it's a volcanic line, very simple. You extend the line, you have pyramid sitting on this line. Well, we can say that the pyramid is sitting on the top of the volcanic line. We have analyzed 75 major pyramid and megalithic sites around the world on six continents, concluding that those pyramids are sitting on the top of the several intersections of the volcanic lines. For example, the famous Angkor Wat. These are pyramid temples in southwestern Cambodia. It's sitting on 15 volcanic lines. Cholula in the state of Puebla in Mexico. There's the largest pyramid in Mexico. It's sitting on 18 volcanic lines. Gunung Padang, the oldest pyramids in uh, Southeastern Asia, 17 volcanic lines. The famous Machu Picchu, 16 volcanic lines. Let's say Great Zimbabwe. In, in Zimbabwe, those conical uh, stone towers sitting on eight volcanic lines. And the Bosnian pyramid sitting on 26 volcanic lines. Why they are important? Volcano means lava iron, energy, quartz crystals, minerals. It has always been about the energy. The next element, 
ley lines. From the case of the Southern England, we know that majority of the sacral objects, cathedrals, churches, and before that, temples, and before that, pagan sacral objects and so on, were located on top of the ley lines. What are the ley lines? Ley lines are underground energy lines. Their origin is cosmic. Well, they are more powerful places than just the ordinary places. And the stone structures amplify this energy. Well, look at the map to the left. It shows the country of Bosnia. And uh, we can see that those ley lines run either north, south, east, west, or diagonal. When we amplify the place with the most intersection of the ley lines to the right, we will realize that the center of all those ley lines and intersections is the town of Visoko, where the pyramids are located. The next element to define the pyramid, I call it energy phenomena. Some of those energy phenomena, like uh, bioenergetical fields that were first spotted by Dr. Harry Oldfield, late Dr. Oldfield from UK, who developed a special camera called PIP camera, can show the differences between active pyramids and all other sites. For example, on the first photo, we can see some pointy hill in Bosnia. Look at the above. The blue field and the red field and the green field, they are all horizontal. The next one shows a little village in Western Serbia. Look at the field above, green. The next one is blue and the brown and the green and the blue and the red. They are all horizontal. The next one, my favorite site in the US is of course Sedona with the famous uh, red rocks. This is one of the most, uh, the best known places called Bell Rock. It is actually, it looks like a step pyramid, but look behind. We can see those horizontal bioenergy fields. This was scanned by my camera. It's not PIP anymore, polycontrast interference uh, photography. Now it's a new technology called new energy vision NEV, new energy vision camera. And look at the next one. This is a road from Aswan to Abu Simbel when I take my groups to Egypt. To the right, we can see something that, that is uh, pyramidal in shape. It's just a natural hill. And again, we have horizontal lines. Some Germans claim that there is a pyramid in Southern Germany, Sonnenfeld, you see the central part in the back, and again, horizontal lines, and voila, this is the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. And look at those bioenergy fields, they are perfectly vertical. We have started scanning our pyramid in Bosnia since 2007, and this is the 2007 picture. Again, we have vertical lines. Something is happening here. What is happening? Look at inside the pyramid, the red color. That's the energy which is getting accumulated and then going through the top of the pyramid. Hitting those horizontal lines, they become vertical. Our conclusion, this pyramid is energetically active. And even this one better shows in panoramic view. To the right, 2015, we can see the town of Visokov in some of the uh, you know, city structures. So to the right, we can see those lines, they are horizontal. To the left, the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, and in the corner, the Love Pyramid. What we can notice, vertical lines, meaning energetically active pyramid. We are the first one in the world applying this technology. Now, when I go to Egypt, I take my nerve camera, and look at this. This is the second largest pyramid in Egypt called Kefren or Kafre pyramid. And I was the first one to prove that this pyramid has been active as well. Of course,
from the mud bricks. Now, not every huge stone superior pyramid is active. For example, Step um, pyramid in Saqqara. Well, I'm the, sorry to interrupt, Dr. Sam. Yes. I think you froze for a minute. Would you repeat that again, what you just said? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm showing the Kefren or Kafre, the second largest pyramid in Egypt at the Giza Plateau. It shows that this pyramid is also energetically active. And I was the first one to prove that in the world. So based on this uh, little introduction, it is very obvious that uh, there is a need for a new definition of the pyramids. And I would define them in a very simplified way like this. The pyramids are simply energy amplifiers or the pyramids are energy machines. Now, the next photo shows the new technology called LIDAR technology. Six years back, the world uh, learned about this technology when the Japanese experts were scanning the northern Guatemala, north from Tikal. They scanned the area, triangular in shape, and they realized that there were 42,000 new structures, and they were not aware of them before. The pyramids, temples, terraces, roads, bridges, and so on. This technology, how do you use it? You basically fly over the place with little Cessna and you have a um, device which is like laser based. Those laser rays, they go under the ground, they go through the forest, they go through the buildings and they show you the shape. And what we have here to the right is this lighter technology applied five years before the one which has be, became famous on you know, National Geographic and so on in, in Guatemala. Well, this one was done much, much before by the Austrian uh, company showing that the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, the one to the right, is not only 220 meters, but this pyramid goes all the way down to the bottom of the valley. So the real height of the pyramid is 360 meters. Besides the Sun Pyramid, we have the second largest pyramid in the world, which I named the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon, the height 190 meters or about 640 feet, still much bigger than the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Wherever we dig, and we have done uh, archaeological digging on 64 different places, we are discovering paved terraces, rectangular structures, plates, shaped blocks, steps, and so on. Huge stone structure. Here we are at the top. When we removed one meter, three and a half feet of soil, we discovered the first paved terrace, the second one, the third. We cut the hole to see the profile. Look what we discovered. You can see the first row block. And then we have about four inches of clay. They use clay as the binding material. The second row blocks, clay. The third row blocks, clay. And imagine what the mainstream scientists, archaeologists, geologists, archaeologists who never came to the site claim that this was all natural. Their problem is the age of the pyramid. And I'll discuss that. This is the base of the pyramid of the moon. Again, paved terraces. Look, one, two, and three. The three is the uh, smallest. And basically here we can see how nicely they applied golden section spiral. How old are the Bosnian pyramids? Number one, they are covered by soil. First, we researched the age of the soil through the Institute for Pedology. Pedology is a science that research investigates the uh, age uh, of the soil. The soil is between 12 and 15,000 years, meaning the structure is much older. And then when we remove the soil between layers of concrete, we discovered the fossilized leaves. 
they got there during the construction process because they were located between the first and the second row of concrete. We've done radiocarbon dating and the age is 29,200 years plus minus 400 years. Look at the, at the bottom, 29,200. Well, this is radiocarbon date. If you want to get calibrated date or calendar age, you need to add about 14%. So the real age of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is 33,600 years. Well, let's talk to the archaeologists and historians. They will tell you it's impossible. That's the era of the primitive cavemen. Is it impossible? Well, what we have here is a science. When the Egyptian pyramids were built, they are telling us 4,550 years back by the fourth dynasty rulers in that country. They are, of course, a little bit before the third dynasty, but then fifth and sixth and so on. So the oldest 4,700 years. Well, we don't have a single scientific proof when they were built, by who, how, and why. However, we do have a proof that they were there during the end of the last ice age, 12,500 years back. Why? Because a lot of seashells and even sea salt were discovered when El Mamnun, 1,200 years back, entered the pyramid violently. They discovered those seashells close to the base of the pyramid, meaning the pyramids were there when we had that big flood wave 12,500 years back. So how old are they? Older than 12,500? For sure. But who built them? Well, let's go to the major, for me, the most important artifact from Egypt. It is not even located in Egypt, but in Turin, Italy. It's called Turin King List. It's a huge papyrus, one meter 70 by 40 centimeters. And there are 11 columns that gives the names of all Egyptian rulers. So the first column is showing gods with a small g. The second one, demigods or semi-gods. And the third one, sons of gods. And that's exactly how Egyptian rulers call themselves. They did not call themselves pharaohs or kings but sons of gods. Why? Because they wanted to have this relation with the first ruler. Sons of gods, humans, ordinary humans, were ruling Egypt two years, five years, 20 years, or 67 years, like Ramesses II. But demigods were ruling Egypt 200 to 300 years in average. And the gods were ruling Egypt one thousand years in average. When did the first gods came to Egypt? According to this papyrus, 42,600 years ago. They ascended from kingdom of sky to the kingdom of earth. If there was really somebody living 1,000 our years, for us humans, and at that time, people lived 30 years or 40 years. They looked immortal because they were there during their grandfather's time, during their father's time, during their times, during their son's times. So they looked like gods. Well, if they lived so much, probably they had technology to build those perfect Egyptian pyramids. Again. You talk to the archaeologists, they tell you well before the end of the last ice age, during the Paleolithic times, there was nothing developed around. Again, wrong. At the bottom of the Pacific floor, in the area called Yonaguni Monuments, 13 underwater cities were discovered. They are between 30 and 80 meters, 250 feet below the sea level. Nobody built cities, 13 of them, connected with the stone roads, 400 kilometers, 250 miles. Nobody built them on the bottom of the ocean floor. At one point, 
they were on the surface. When was that? When ice hold all the water. Ice melted, last end of the ice age, huge quantities of water went to the world, seas and oceans, Pacific went up for 80 meters, cover those stone cities. Another proof that some of the civilizations thrived before the end of the last ice age. Gobekli Tepe, southeastern Turkey, 1994, Dr. Klaus Schmidt from Germany is discovering an amazing site. He uncovered three megalithic circles built from T-shaped megaliths, some of them reaching 12 or 13 tons. They probably looked like this. As we can see, one circle is like mini Stonehenge, three of them. When he passed away seven years back, and I was one of the last persons talking to him. The Turkish government took over. They uncovered three more circles. And Dr. Schmidt told me before he passed away, there were probably 100 megalithic circles. Who built them? The official narrative is only agricultural societies from 5,000 years back were able to build huge megalithic sites because they had a lot of extra food, they had fortune and so on. Well, 100 megalithic circles and not a single residential dwelling was discovered there. No houses, nobody lived there. Who built it and why? A lot of mysterious questions. Let's go back to the purpose of pyramids. In order to understand the purpose of pyramids, archeologists, geologists, historians, museum curators cannot help us. Nobody teaches them about the true purpose of pyramid. We need experts for energy phenomena, physicists, electrical engineers, sound engineers, telecommunication engineers, geophysicists, medical doctors, people with the scientific instruments who can measure. For example, here we have a team from Croatia who brought their scientific instruments. We have Gauss meters, we have oscilloscope, we have spectrometer. So they've been measuring different phenomena. On the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the sun, like Valerie repeatedly said several times, we have measured energy beam, which is 28 kilohertz frequency, which is electrical in nature. It is continuous because we do measure it during all four seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. And then we had another team, this time from Serbia, who came with their instruments. You see to the right, Tesla meter, trifold meter, multimeter, oscilloscope, and so on. And they confirm the same frequency. You see to the right, 28 kilohertz frequency. We had teams from Germany, from Finland, from Italy. They all confirmed existence of this energy beam. Well, when in science, you have five different scientific teams who come at five different times, who bring their own equipment and who all get the same results. It is called an international scientific verification of the phenomenon. Which one? Well, this one right here. This energy beam, which in the morning is directed to the east, the place where the sun rises. And the noon time to the south, when the sun is exactly above our head. Afternoon, southwest, evening, west. What does that mean? It means that this energy beam exactly aim at our sun, at our Father, the one that gives us light, warmth, information, life. Wanted to see if uh, some cosmic phenomenon can affect the strength of this energy beam. So back in July 27, 2018, we had famous total moon eclipse, a red moon. 
And we measured the strength of this energy B in the afternoon before the moon eclipse. And then during the moon eclipse, which happened around uh, 9.15 PM until 10.30 or 10.45. And we realized that the signal was two times stronger during the moon eclipse. So indeed, those cosmic phenomena affect the strength of the energy beam. And then in another experiment, we were measuring the strength at the ground. This is the top of the sun pyramid and then three meters on 10 or 10 feet higher. And you see at the ground 1.9 volts, three meter higher, 3.9 volts, six meter higher, 20 feet higher. We had more than six volts which means that the strength is getting stronger as you move away from the top of the pyramid. Well, it does not sound logical. If the source of the energy is inside the pyramid or below the pyramid, the strength should be weaker and weaker as you move away from the pyramid. But nothing is logical in Bosnia this strength is getting stronger and stronger as you move away from the top of the pyramid. In science, this uh, phenomenon is called Tesla's scalar waves. The brilliant mind of Nikola Tesla, 123 years ago, was researching subtle soft energies the scalar waves. And then 1899, he built famous Wardenclyffe Tower in the state of New York. Due to the lack of money and the problems with uh, billionaire JP Morgan, he's done just a few experiments. But based on them, he wrote in his diary, I have found a way to move huge quantities of energy thousands of horsepowers between two planets, regardless of their distance. And the frequency he was using was 28 kilohertz, exactly the same one that we measure on the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, which was built more than 30,000 years before Nikola Tesla. Interestingly enough, this is not the only energy beam which was filmed or scanned around the planet. 10 years back, the tourist from El Salvador was filming his family in front of the Kukulkan pyramid in Chichen Itza, in Yucatan. This is the Mayan pyramid. You see the energy beam going to the very top of the pyramid. After he filmed his kids, publish it on social media. After that, the Mexican government forbid people to climb the top, not allowing engineers or physicists to research this phenomenon. This is the moon pyramid in Teotihuacan in Mexico. You see the central part going mm -hmm. through the top, energy beam. So there are more energetically active pyramids around the world. Among experiments that we've done here in Bosnia, at one time we sent the drone above the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the sun. The photo on the top is showing the drone with oscilloscope. Oscilloscope measures electromagnetic field. That day we were measuring seven different energy phenomena electromagnetism, electrical field only, magnetic field only, ultrasound, infrasound, organ energy, the temperature. And we concluded that not only that we have existence of the energy beam, but look how it behaves. It runs from 13 feet radius, four and a half meter, going to 20 meters or 65 feet, then coming back to four and a half, meters, 20, four and a half, 20, four and a half, elliptical in the nature. So this energy beam 
text has scalar waves that move through the space much quicker than the speed of light is a base for the first function of the pyramid energy. And that would be the communication. So our first conclusion, the pyramids are communication devices. The second ones, we need to go under the ground in the tunnels. This is how they look like today. We clear the tunnels from the debris, from the filler material. We put the wooden support. And so far, we have cleared about three kilometers, about two miles of those prehistorical tunnels. And this is only 3% of the original network. In the tunnels, we discover, you can see to the right, those walls. In archaeology, they are called dry walls, very compact dry walls because they have no binding materials. We also discover those big blocks. You see this block on the bottom, it's sitting on the support, support plate. Somebody placed it here. We took samples from the block, then very sophisticated analysis called Rengen diffraction analysis and phase analysis. Conclusion, this was definitely artificial ceramic material. Then we applied georadar and realized that there were on three places inside this block pieces of quartz crystal. Quartz crystal is extremely important mineral. Quartz crystal has ability to amplify the energy. Quartz crystal has ability to transform one form of the energy to another one. For example, since we can measure electromagnetic field, when electromagnetism hits the quartz crystal through the piezoelectrical effect, it transforms it to the ultrasound. And we measure both electromagnetism and the ultrasound. The frequency, 28 kilohertz. In the ultrasound, 28 kilohertz is the frequency of the levitation. And you see this block, how it's sitting on support. We also measure to the left and to the right, very low frequency. In the science, it is called ELF, extremely low frequency of 7.83 Hertz. And this was one of your questions, the original Schumann, Schumann resonance. resonance. Nikola Tesla claimed 125 years back that our planet resonates he thought it was about eight hertz. Austrian von Schumann measured it back 50 years ago, 7.83. This was the only frequency of our planet for 12,000 years until 1990s. After that, we got so much bad electromagnetism, EM smog, which is generated by TVs, computers, laptops, tablets, cell phones, satellite antennas, American project heart. This electromagnetism has to go somewhere. It goes to the ionosphere around our planet. If you believe that our planet is a sphere, not the flat earth. So it is around our planet and then it pushes, it put a pressure on our mother planet. And she starts resonating a little bit higher. In Sarajevo, Bosnia, 12 Hertz. Munich, Germany, 15 Hertz. New York, 18 Hertz, depending on how contaminated is the city. When we think we create brain waves, even though nowadays less and less people barely think at all. So we create those brain waves and they operate at 7.83 Hertz. When we have our planet 7.83 Hertz, we are in balance. When we have our planet or some places like populated area, 12, 15, or 20, there is a disbalance. The result, stress. And stress causes 70 to 80% of all diseases, starting with the high blood pressure, cardiovascular, sugar, and so on. So in the Bosnian pyramid tunnels, 7.83. You go in there, you go back to your balance. We also scanned this block with a special technology and we can see a lot of uh, blue areas, dark blue 
It means this is high frequency radiation. It does affect our psychological states. It does affect our spiritual abilities. So this place is ideal for spiritual work. If you want to achieve your astral projection easier, this is the place to be. This is the most attractive place in the tunnels, even though we have uncovered about 2.6 kilometers or 1.5 miles, most of the tourists that come, they love this place. They try to feel the energy, they meditate, they relax and so on. There is another, another block which we called K1. The previous one was K2, this is K1. We can see a lot of red color. Well, red is a low frequency radiation and low frequency easily go through our body affecting among other things our blood circulation. When our blood circulates better, going to all arterials and alveoles, it means that we are simply healthier. Well, now we open a new aspect of the pyramid energy, our health. Every year, we evident hundreds of cases of people who claim that they feel much better after visiting the tunnels. For example, this girl, her name is Veronica. She is from Slovakia. A few years back, she was using only 47% of her lung capacity. For three years, she was trying different therapies. Nothing was helping her. And then she came to the Bosnian Pyramid Tunnels. She stayed in Visoko for 10 days, going to the tunnels one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening. After 10 days, she went and measured it again at the clinic. And now she was using 84% of her lung capacity. She came back that September and she was volunteering with us. Before that, she was not able to walk properly. When she was doing one or two steps, <laughs> she could not breathe. And now in September, she was pushing the wheelbarrows in our tunnels with other volunteers. We had a team from Czech Republic, medical nurse, six people measuring different, different parameters, blood pressure, sugar, and so on. Sugar in the blood, if it is on the scale from 3.2 to 6.2, normal, 6.2 to 10, risky group, above 10, diabetes. People were coming with, for example, 7.8, one visit to the tunnels, 5.1. Another guy, 10.5, one visit to the tunnels, he dropped to 5.7 from diabetes level to normal level. This woman from Turkey to the left, she was having blood pressure problems. It would go up to 220 over 135. You can imagine migraines. Well, after two visits to the tunnels, it went down to 120 over 80, and she told us that she would be coming to Bosnia twice a year, and she's been doing that, and her blood pressure never goes above 140 overnight. But you know, you know, Dr. Sam, this is all so very interesting. I'm so excited to see all these testimonies. Well, you know, we are running out of time. If you okay. Just quicken well, it, I'm, yeah, coming, I'm coming to the end uh, in uh, probably yeah. four or five minutes. Cool. Yeah. The bioenergy field, auric field, measured by Dr. Konstantin Korotkov's biovel to the left before the tunnels, and we can see this continuation due to the stress. To the right, after the tunnels, we can see the completely recovered auric field. Chakras to the left before the tunnels, nice and balanced chakras, but rather small, closed again, stress. To the right, after the tunnels, completely open. So, why is happening that? We measure different energy phenomena. I mentioned several of them. No cosmic radiations, no natural radioactivity, no signal for mobile phones or cell phones, no signal for Wi-Fi. We have the best electromagnetic, Frequencies 28, the best ultrasound, 
the best low frequency of Schumann resonance and high concentration of negative ions. Those eight or nine elements make the safest place on the planet. You enter inside, your body does not have enemies and they start doing their job. They start the regeneration process. They start detoxication process. And if you got lucky, they start the rejuvenation process. And maybe, just maybe, that was the major purpose of pyramids and pyramid energy in the distant past. And I will stop right here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sam. We were studying Pyramid Mats um, because he shared his knowledge. So uh, we, we just want to show you very quickly so you can take a good look. Um, Dr. Valerie has gone off, unfortunately, um, because he will be very interested in it. But this is what we are about. We at Physic, the Free Energy Special Interest Group, our platform is to put some of the most brilliant minds together uh, studying and then uh, researching on your specialized field so we can put you together in forums in talks so you can expand and develop more on, on your your specialized fields so uh Pontus would you like to share screen on that one because you can yeah. overwrite Dr. Sam's uh, screen sharing just a very quick one because we're running out of time and Heslin my apologies, <laughs> but it's all very relevant to what we are doing and developing in free energy, alternative uh, energy here at Physic Energy. So have you taken off the surname? So, because he wanted, yeah. yeah. So I just want you to have a quick look, Dr. Sam, on uh, the pyramids mats that our R&D team has been um, teams has been actually mulling over. It's really fascinating. And if you would uh, scroll down, um, this gentleman has given it a lot of thought. He said how much information is built in people that just comes out because they are part of the creation of this universe as a whole. Um, so he was looking at the forms of the art and all that. And it seems, he says, um, a seemingly coincidental connection such as the Fahrenheit temp that use random low high yearly for some small town somewhere in time. The square root of three equals to 1.732. The distance pyramids total is 1732, the electric three phase calculation. It's, it's very relevant to the free energy enthusiasts anyway. And so it goes on. I mean, this is recorded. So you can actually freeze screen and go into the details. I don't want to read everything because we don't have the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Sam, if you're interested in uh, getting to know this gentleman so you can study the maths together and perfect what you're doing, I'll be very happy to do the introduction because this is what Physic is about, to bridge uh, the people together so they can move forward, study together and, and develop and progress further on the science and the technology and the spirituality. Okay, so here Good. he is. Please, please yeah. do so. Wonderful. He says the pyramids are connections to the lost information from the past. So there you go. It's... Um, something to look at it's really what well, he's got some fascinating findings here okay so it's just a thought right i think that's it i will be so happy to make the connections for you dr sam and please, yes, yes yes please do so certainly yeah thank you so much Pontus, for uh, sharing screen well, you know we're so fortunate so honored and so lucky to have you guys uh, no we don't need this because it's different yeah. Oh, is this a pyramid? Okay. Well, anyway, uh, to, to have you um, speaking at Physic, Dr. Sam and uh, Dr. Valerie, um, you are amazing. You, <laughs> I suppose that's your divine mission to be reincarnated here at this point of time to help everyone um, uh, detox, repair, regenerate and be made whole again. 
uh, considering what's happening in the past couple of years that is so damaging. Yeah. Uh, well, I think uh, we all ought to think about making <laughs> trips to the Bosnian Pyramid to visit Dr. Sam. <laughs> Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Pontus, you have anything that you want to say on the uh, Thomas uh, pyramid mathematics that you was just? Uh, not more than that. Uh, I thank you so much for uh, your presentation of you, Sam, Dr. Sam and Dr. Valerie. Thank you. And uh, Pontus and I will be thinking of possibly organizing our teams, our R&D teams to visit you at some point, Dr. Sam. <laughs> You will be welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, all right. So um, is there any question? Oh, James, our, our other co-chair, um, you had one very important question to ask, right? And, and before we close, if you could just pose that to Dr. Sam right now. James, unmute. The, um, you know, Dr. Sam, you know James Ring, right? Uh, of the Super Soldier Talk yeah. site, yeah? Uh, Secret Space. Whoa. Well, my question would then, so um, I guess maybe we should sleep in a pyramid. I mean, they do sell those little copper ones or just copper pipes. Mm -hmm. It's not as probably as fancy as the pyramids that you've been in, but I mean, it surely must get some effect. What yeah. do you think? As long as you have pyramid, even though it was built, you know, using copper pipes, and then you add elemental orientation, it makes this pyramid feel stronger. It will have beneficial effect to your body. The simple test, you make little replica of let's say Great Pyramid of Egypt, four-sided triangular faces, perfect square base, orientation, 52 degrees. You put a glass of milk in the pyramid and a glass of milk you know, somewhere on the kitchen table. The one in the pyramid will stay fresh much longer, three, four days longer than the other one. The same goes with the meat or any other food stuff. So these are very simple experiments telling us that the pyramid energy does work. And such experiments have been done in the last seven, eight decades around the world. If you have the one above your head, you know, in your bedroom, yes, it's gonna help you sleep better and regenerate better than without it. Thank you, Dr. Sam. We also have in our midst, we have a star-studded audience here today for your talk. And we have uh, Dan Winter. <laughs> Dan Winter here with his um, uh, girlfriend, his partner, uh, Valerie. Sandler. Dan, how are you, man? <laughs> Hi, Sam. We, we love you. It's fabulous. And I'm always loving your work, the rejuvenation stuff. And just a couple of quick suggestions in terms of electrical engineering there. You know, <clears throat> when uh, Patrick, whom you know, did the spectrum analysis of your Bosnian pyramid, we figured out why the dominant harmonic was 53, not 50 hertz which was because the actual Schumann 2.7.8 is above the theoretical accurate to conjugate 7.29. But you know, that also explains the difference to your 28,000 Hertz, because if you take that same cascade, it should have been 26.18, but in fact at 28,000. So all of that is proof that the frequency cascade is doing the implosion to project what's called coherent longitudinal interferometry, which is actually a language more accurate than to say Tesla scalar. It's, that's the correct term. And then when you understand that, you know why that longitudinal interferometry causes seeds to grow and is the precise physics of a global power distribution without wires. I would love to get together with you again on this. And I think we can kind of tweak that to the next step in terms of electrical engineering with you. We should have more fun. <laughs> yes, then yes. come along with us. You'll be joining us when we organize a trip to the Boston Pyramid, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, Valerie loves Sam too, so it's all good. But Aww. Sam, Sam, you and I need to talk about the electrical engineering. And you know, poor Valerie Uvaroff, he didn't understand when I was living with him in Paris that if he had taken the steel out of his pyramid, then Karatkov would not have measured the destruction of auras in his pyramid. He didn't get it that the dielectric constant was destroyed by the steel in his pyramids, unfortunately, because he doesn't didn't quite catch the implosion. But anyway, that's another story. But Sam, let's you and I have a chat sometime soon. I'd love to. We will. We will. 
Well, thank you. Isn't good, that good. wonderful? All right. And then I'm going to send you Bosnian passport and we'll get you out of there. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another, we're going to play. It's all good. <laughs> thank right. You. Thank so you, Sam. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam. I really, really am so honored to have you here speaking at our platform. Um, and uh, Yes, if you have anyone last say or real quick <laughs> before I close. No, yeah, real, real quick. quick. Okay, good night. Uh, uh, Dr. Sam, on your slide, which was orientation number three, I have one major question to the right of that pyramid. Is that a mud flow? Mud flow. To the right, uh, I believe there's the access plateau that you are looking uh, for. Okay. So it is uh, on our Western side, access plateau, which is also paved by sandstone blocks mm -hmm. and the pyramid is covered in concrete blocks. So it was, uh, it was an it, artificially it, paved area. Yeah, and it below looks it, we can, we during uh, you know using the satellite technology we discovered uh, a tunnels below this access plateau yeah it it looked like a either a pyroclastic flow or a mud flow slapped up against the side of your great your big pyramid that was my only question thank you oh, okay but yes yes you're right uh, now we can see that on that uh, lidar technology we can see that uh, half of the pyramid is really covered in this either in the mud flow or you know it's been covered in the past yes thank you <laughs> right. all right very much fun right so um there being no other business now this first session of our 101st physics meeting is now adjourned to the second session thank you Pontius. you can see